Hey, what's up YouTubers? Thanks for checking out yet another video. Today, I wanted to go through my home theater with you guys. I wanted to share my equipment and my thoughts on what I think about my setup. Um, I'd like you guys to share your equipment and thoughts about your setups in the comments section below. And more importantly, tell me what you paid for everything because I will be going through each and every component here and telling you what I paid for everything as well. I'm a bit of a budget audiophile, so I don't like spending good money on, uh, especially on audio gear anymore. You can get good deals on the internet, on your Craigslist, on your Kijiji. Um, so yeah, always search the internet and look for good audio equipment. So yeah, here's my room. I'm going to go through the room, go through all the equipment with you guys, let you know what I've got set up what we got going on and uh, stay tuned. Here we go. Let's get right into it, shall we? Uh, let's start with my lower front left and right speakers. These are the Definitive Technology BP-10B, and they are bipolar speakers. They have two six and a half inch drivers and two one inch alum aluminum tweeters, um, one in the front, one in the rear, and these speakers I paid $100 for, actually. So I thought I got a really, really good deal. Um, I think these speakers overall, I would say, are neutral or a bit dark. I'm not a big fan of them for music, but for movies, they're awesome. And I really, really enjoy bipolar speakers for movies. For music, not so much. Um, I'm not saying I'm against bipolar speakers for music, but just the ones that I've heard to date, I, I'm not a big fan of bipolar speakers for music. However, I do use these while I listen to music, and I'll talk about my system here uh, with the top speakers in a moment as I go through everything. So I've got a Paradigm... 15 inch sub here we'll get a better look at it uh, so this is a paradigm reference 15 inch sub I got a really killer good deal on this sub this sub and this center speaker I paid a hundred dollars for and the guy even threw in a Denon receiver so I thought that was a killer deal what a nice guy this sub sounds really good. It's a little floppy, um, but for movies, it's amazing. For music, I'm not a big fan of 15s. In an ideal world, I'd like to have two 10-inch subwoofers up front for music and the larger drivers for movies. Um, I know there's good audiophile type subs out there that will do both jobs. Uh, for music and for movies. However, this is a budget setup guys. I, I'm not I'm not looking at spending good money on on audio equipment. So Paradigm reference 15 Excellent subwoofer if you ever come across one. I highly recommend it um, The center channel the lower center channel is a Paradigm CC 370 version 2 I'm a big fan of Paradigm overall. However, as I go through this journey of listening to speakers, I find Paradigm to be this generation, rather, with these clear type of polypropylene drivers. So if you see any older gen Paradigm stuff with these drivers, here's my opinion of this stuff. Very dynamic. They'll play loud. They'll sound pretty good. 
but the overall transient response of these drivers is kind of low. I would put them in the neutral to dark range as well. Um, I'm becoming a bit of a fan of um, more brighter sounds, I guess. Now, when you start getting brighter sounds, uh, you you basically you know start getting those fatiguing sounds as well. So. There's always a trade-off, and I don't find the speaker fatiguing, but I find it very, it's a little too dark for me. It's a little too neutral. However, you know, for $100 for the sub and the speaker, I'm not complaining. So let's go through the, and then over, sorry, over here, we've got the front right DevTech BP-10B. So I've also got a top sound stage going on. I've got a front or a, uh, the height channel left and right and the top center speaker as well. So the height channels, I've got these B&W DM601s. I'm a big fan of B&W overall. These speakers are kind of bright. Um, I prefer the sound if I can equalize them a little bit and just take a little smidgen off the top end. But I would rather have that bright detail than not have it at all. I'd rather have that detail and be able to tame it rather than not have it at all. I love the Kevlar driver. I find that it, uh, it's pretty dynamic overall, but the transients are pretty quick off the driver. So I'm a big fan of these, uh, these speakers. Um, these speakers I paid good money for. I've had them for about 20 years. I think I paid overall $400 for the B&W DM601s. I traded them for a pair of B&W DM302s, which are a fantastic speaker, and $100 to my brother. So that's how I ended up, ended up with these ones. I paid $400 for the DM601s, but that was 20 years ago, and that was one of the the more costlier purchases in the system. For my top center speaker, I've got the Focal JM Labs Chorus V CC370. There's two six and a half inch drivers and the one inch uh, tweeter. I know it's a metallic dome tweeter. I'm not too sure what kind it is. They like to use beryllium and magnesium and all types of things. I'm a huge fan of these guys, though. JM Labs or Focal. I think this speaker sounds absolutely phenomenal. It is a sealed box, and I'm a big fan of sealed boxes. Um, for all of my... Well, actually, sorry. For all of my subs, they're all sealed. I've blocked the ports and even the ports on the DevTech BP-10Bs. I've blocked the ports on those. I like the quicker sound that I get by doing that. So the Focal, I'm a big fan of these speakers. I would like to get, uh, I'd like to use LCRs all the way around if I could. Uh, these speakers, they're fairly expensive if you buy them new. I got a smoking good deal on this speaker as well. I paid $70. Uh, keep in mind, all of the prices I've listed are Canadian prices. So that's my front sound stage. Basically, we've got the B&W DM601s, which I paid $400 for about 20 years ago. They're an excellent, excellent, excellent speaker. We've got the Definitive Tech BP10Bs up front, which I paid $100 for the pair. And I've got the... Paradigm CC370 lower center speaker, the Paradigm 15-inch um, sub, the reference 15, that combo was 100 bucks. The Focal Chorus V, $70 speaker, and uh, yeah, so that's what I paid for each one of those components. We'll come around to the side surround speakers and uh my right hand side sub here so this sub actually cost me zero dollars overall um basically the subs 
I got two of these subs and a kid that I did an audio install for, he just gave me these subs. He didn't want them anymore. They're kicker competition, 12 inch dual voice coil subs. And while they might not be the best in terms of fi fidelity, they certainly put out great SPL when it comes to movies and they sound fantastic. They don't break up. They don't distort. They just sound phenomenal. So I just threw that guy in there. It's a dual voice coil. I wired it down for two ohms on this energy amp. And it's been, it's been happy since the day I threw it in. Puts out great sound pressure. I blocked that port and it sounds really, really good. Um, the side surrounds are Energy Odyssey A2 Plus 2. These side surrounds basically are a bipolar speaker. They have two five and a quarter inch drivers and two one inch aluminum dome tweeters. Now, unfortunately, I've blown up all the tweeters. Well, three out of the four. So I've replaced them with Polk Audio Silk Dome tweeters. And as much as I want that original, uh, sound back uh, they still sound okay for side surrounds uh, i paid good money for these speakers actually back in the day about 20 years ago i paid about 550 dollars for the pair of speakers so um, we'll talk about the totals of my setup at the end here and we'll be right back with the rear speakers so in the back as the rear surrounds, I've got the M&K LCR 750THX speakers. Now, you can see that this particular speaker is not really set up optimal. I have to uh, change the angle on it a little bit and get some of that dust off there and clean that wall, obviously. But that's just the way she goes. So that's my, uh, my right rear surround. We got the projector, the BenQ. Uh, w5000 projector this is just a 1080p projector you can see that's my leveling kit right there so that gets me nice and level and uh, I need to upgrade this projector but it doesn't owe me anything and I do enjoy my movies on the big screen for the uh, left rear surround same thing LCR 750 THX as you can see that this guy's been JB welded um, I got a really, really good deal on these speakers. I got them from a pawn shop and they sold me three speakers for $45. They sold me these two speakers and a Nuance Center speaker. I sold that Nuance Center speaker for $20. So this pair of speakers cost me $25. Now, I'm not a big fan of these speakers overall. They're very dynamic and they put out some good sound pressure, but once again, they fall in that um, neutral to dark kind of overall sound. Um, five and a quarter inch drivers, I'm not a big fan of anymore. They do sound great, but I think for my room size, I am looking at doing six and a half inch drivers all the way around. So these are the Miller and Kressel LCR 750 THX, and I paid $25 for the pair uh, and the one came with a cracked driver that I fixed with JB Weld and to be 100% honest with you even the most discerning listener I don't think would be able to um, hear that driver so I've got here is my left side surround I've got another 12 inch sub another kicker competition uh, CVR 12 and this is in a nuance enclosure now this sub I've had to wire for 8 ohms this particular amplifier oh my goodness it is just a poor poor amplifier uh, that came from nuance I'm surprised it hasn't died if you know anything about nuance and how crap they are um, you'll know that all of their amplifier modules typically die now, I'm planning on making an entire video on Nuance, to be honest with you, and just talk a little bit about them, go through some of their drivers and their technologies and what people paid for them back in the day and why, in my opinion, they were a really, really poor and deceptive company that uh, took advantage of a lot of people. So 
Nuance Enclosure, Nuance Plate Amp, Kicker Competition Sub. Once again, this guy is JB Welded. It had a little crack on the front. And other than the amp just sounding absolutely horrible, um, this sub actually sounds pretty decent. I've got this one. I've got the port blocked on it as well. And here's the other Energy Odyssey A2 plus, A2 plus 2 as the side surround. So I've got one more sub to show you guys in the setup. And that is right here. So this is my fourth sub. I got a really, really good deal on this sub as well. Um, the guy actually delivered it to my work for $40. It is an energy uh, something 12 inch sub. I really, I'm not a big fan of this sub, to be honest with you. It's, the the cabinet sounds a little bit hollow and um, it's really not as dynamic as I need a sub to be. So what I've done is I removed the driver and I packed a bunch of foam material in there and just kind of deadened the cabinet a little bit. And, um, you know, that helped it considerably, but I keep the gain on this sub turned down a little bit and it's just to kind of fill the room up a little bit so that's my fourth fourth sub there that's pretty much my whole setup it's a 10.4 setup uh, that's only being decoded by a 7.2 system so this is pretty well the front end of the audio we've got a Denon AVR 989 that is my processor essentially that receiver powers the the top three speakers and then the denon avr 5800 powers the rest of the speakers i simply run all the pre outs from the 989 into the 5800 and i'm using it as a standalone amplifier whoa pancakes so, um, I know this isn't the greatest shot, nor are my videos of the greatest quality, but you gotta, I look at my YouTube videos like I look at girls, you know, um, lower your standards a little bit and be prepared to have a good time. So I got a really, really good deal on both of these items as well. Um, the AVR 989, I got delivered to my house for $100. Um, very happy with the receiver. It's decent overall. It's only like a hundred Watts per channel with all channels driven. But for me, it sounds good enough for my room, to be honest. Uh, I thought I would be really displeased with the power, but I am not on the right hand side, the AVR 5,800, that thing's a beast. That thing's a legend. I paid $150 for it. And my sole intention is was I just wanted it for a multi-channel amp and I'm a big fan of Denon so I wanted to play around with it see what it was all about I'm guessing with the external input I'm probably rocking about 100 to 130 watts a channel that's my best guess what's your guys's best guess leave in the comment section below so that's basically how I'm powering the entire system with two home theater receivers, one as a standalone amplifier and the other one powering three channels and doing the decoding. I primarily have everything hooked up to my computer. So um, my computer is my only source for Netflix, movies, music. For music, I'm streaming Tidal Hi-Fi and anybody who knows anything about streaming knows that Tidal Hi-Fi, it's the bomb. It's the bomb digs, right? It, the sound that I get from Tidal is, it's phenomenal. It's pretty well CD quality in my opinion. So thanks for checking out this video. Thanks for coming into my home and checking out my 10.4 setup here. Overall, I'm okay with my setup. Um, number one is I need to work on my room, my room acoustics, big time. It sounds horrible in this room, hardwood floors, vaulted ceilings. 
So I need to work on the room acoustics, starting with the first reflection point, which as you can see, I don't have a, a carpet in the bottom. I need to get a carpet down there. Some acoustic treatments on some acoustic panels on the side. You know, I might even try the Kleenex mod with the DM601s. Let me know what you think about that. I find them a little bright, a little harsh. So I might put a piece of Kleenex over that tweeter and see if that can EQ it out a little bit. Um, but yeah, room acoustics, this left wall here where the door is, this wall, when this, the subwoofers get going, this thing just shakes to shit. There's no insulation behind that wall. It sounds absolutely horrible. Let's uh, finish this video here. So, overall system cost $3,300. Now, a big portion of that cost was, you know, 20 years ago I bought these B&W DM601s and the Energy Odyssey A2 Plus 2, and I spent good money on them. A combination of the both pairs, $950. So by today's standards, I mean on the used market, these DM601s, in my opinion, are worth about 100 to 150, sorry, 150 to 200 Canadian, and the Energy Odyssey A2 Plus 2 are worth about 80 to 100 Canadian. So if I can Consider that into the overall cost of the system if I were to buy them used today. Um, you know, the system's right around $2,700. Now, I never mentioned a couple things as well. Number one, how did I get this sub for free? I basically bought a 5.1 setup, and this being the 0.1 portion of the setup, um, I sold the other five speakers and... I made money and got the sub, which had the original driver for free, essentially. So, and then I got that driver for free from that kid, and that's how that sub was actually free. Um, this Nuance sub actually cost me $80 when I bought it. Originally, it was the first sub that I bought. It's a downfiring sub that sounds absolutely horrible when it's downfiring. Um, it might sound a little boomier, uh, especially when the port isn't blocked, but uh, that sub was $80 and the, the driver sounded absolutely horrible. Some paper 12-inch garbage driver that uh, really gets outperformed by a JB Welded Kicker Competition CVR12 wired for 8 ohms. Um, the flat panel, I paid $300 for this flat panel. It's a sharp 60 inch HDR 4K monitor, 60, 60 FPS or 60 Hertz or whatever. Uh, 300 bucks, it was basically an open box. I found that guy on Kijiji. And my projector, I paid $900 for my projector. So projector was used, I purchased that about seven years ago and paid $900 for it with a spare bulb. I know I need a new projector. I need a lot of things, but for now it does the trick and it gets the job done. So when I want to watch a movie, I can just swivel the screen up against the wall, flip the switch. Ah, she bumps a little bit, but I've seen worse. <clears throat> this is a Draper Targa screen. It's 133 inches, so I get a nice big image. It is a little bit wavy, as you can see. It's not perfect. I paid $300 for, for this screen um, with the mount and everything. Or sorry, with the switch, rather. I just had to wire it up. And for movies, you can't see the waviness in the screen. But if you were to open like an Excel spreadsheet or something, you definitely would notice it. I'm happy with the screen overall. I might try some things to get a little straighter, but if you're looking at getting a screen, you know, I, I say go with 120 inches, baby. 120 inches or, or more. Go big or go home. So that's how I got my screen set up, just to switch on the wall here. And you just hit her and she goes. All right, well, thank you for checking out 
this video on my home theater. I plan on doing a video about nuanced speakers just to inform the public on who they are, what they are, how crap, how crap they really are. Um, I'd like to do reviews on audio, audio products because I'm an enthusiast, but I don't like spending money. So I really need to work on this room as well. I need to treat it. Hopefully you can tell by the poor quality of this video that uh, this room sounds pretty horrible and that does translate into my my audio performance. I wanted to touch on something having the lower and upper sound stage even though I'm not truly decoding it. I love it. I pretty much can tune my receivers, uh, the trims on the, the you know the individual channels and get a really, really fantastic phantom image between the lower and the upper speakers. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, for example, the center speaker, I don't hear the individual speakers. I hear a phantom image in the center. For my left and right speakers, what I hear is more of a, a line array. It's a very big, tall sound and because I'm able to to tune the amplifiers and the gains I can really get a good blend a good mesh between the lower speakers and the upper speakers for my subwoofers they sound amazing for for movies like this place like it gets uncomfortable in here if I crank it up sound pressure overall on my phone I use the SPL meter and at my listening position uh, you know, a reference level for movies. I haven't tested for music yet, but, you know, a reference level, I'm hitting about 85 to 90 dB. And anything above that, it starts, the room starts sounding really bad. The, the walls start vibrating. And uh, this wall, for example, is not even insulated inside. So it just, the room falls apart when the sound pressure starts getting way too loud. Um, and then I do need to treat it a little bit to uh, enjoy my two-channel music a little bit more. Especially these BMWs, I find them a little fatiguing, a little bright, a little harsh. I might even try the Kleenex mod on them and uh, see what kind of use results that yields me. So, thanks for checking out my system. Hopefully, you guys enjoy. Uh, just wanted to say for my surrounds, the direction I want to go is a bipolar wall-mounted surround, such as a Focal SR700V, um, possibly even a dipole from Para Paradigm, a Paradigm ADP370V2 or above. Um, so yeah, I'd like to improve my, my surround sound, and that's that's how I think I'm going to do that is by buying multiple pairs of those speakers and getting them mounted for the side surrounds, rear surrounds, and <clears throat> excuse me, uh, eventually Dolby Atmos. This place is just getting ready for Dolby Atmos. We need some Atmos up in here, don't we? So if I had a receiver, I would have a reason to get more speakers or a sound processor to get that Atmos going on. So like and subscribe, dislike, unsubscribe, it doesn't matter to me. Have a good day. Peace.